Our next example, this guy says, find the volume of a solid. Find the volume of solid. What is the solid that lies under the paraboloid? Under the paraboloid. Z equals to x squared plus y squared above x y plane. And inside the cylinder, inside the cylinder, the equation for the cylinder is given to us as x squared plus y squared equals to 2x. Very excellent. So here you have x squared plus y squared. You have a relation that can be also converted into polar form. So our preference is using polar coordinates. But to use the polar coordinates, we're going to use r equals to x equals to r cosine theta, y equals to r sine theta, and see what are the boundaries for r and theta. So this object in three dimension is going to be bounded by, well, z equals to x squared plus y squared. This object is going to be roughly here. This is my paraboloid, like a bull. And then for x squared plus y squared equals to 2x, you can just bring 2x to the other side and complete the square, pure algebra, x squared minus 2x plus y squared is equal to zero, x squared minus 2x plus one plus y squared is equal to one, or x minus one to the second power plus y squared equals to one, or you have the base is going to be circle centered at one and zero with radius equals to one, right? So if you have your x-axis, y-axis, this guy, this cylinder is going to be roughly here, the base of the cylinder. And then it's going to just continue on both sides. This is your cylinder, okay? The object, the solid lies under the paraboloid under the paraboloid and inside the cylinder, okay. And it's above x, y plane, so we can just ignore this negative part. So this is your cylinder that you're dealing with. So let's try to convert everything into polar form. In the polar world, coordinates, this is going to be r, x is r cosine theta, y is r sine theta. So x squared plus y squared equals to 2x becomes r squared cosine squared theta plus r squared sine squared theta equals to 2r cosine theta. So if I fact out r squared here, I left with r squared times one because sine squared plus cosine squared is one equals to 2r cosine theta. And then here you can write down r squared minus 2r cosine theta equal to zero or r times r minus two cosine theta equal to zero. r is zero and r is two cosine theta. So r is bounded between zero and two cosine theta. This is the boundary that you have for your R. If you look at this object, the base of the object is going to be this guy here. This is my base. R is bounded between zero and on this function, which is R equals to two cosine theta. This is my basis. Let me use a different color so we can highlight that over here. This is my base. The purple one is my base here. Very good. So what about theta? 
2 cosine theta is equal to 0 or cosine theta is 0, you have the option theta to be pi over 2 and negative pi over 2. So we found the boundary for R and also boundary for R theta. So since we are finding the volume and this is the ceiling that we have, the volume is equal to the double integral of x squared plus y squared dA that everything needs to convert it into R and theta. So volume is equal to theta is bounded between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2, the inner integral. R is bounded between 0 and 2 cosine theta. And this guy is R squared cosine theta plus R squared sine theta, or just R squared. And dA is R, dr, d theta. Very good. So V for the volume is negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. R, this is R cubed. You get one fourth R to the fourth, zero to two cosine theta, d theta. We're going back to elementary calculus. This is a fourth integral negative pi over two to pi over two. Here you have 16 cosine to the fourth theta, d theta. Now you have to reduce the exponent on the right. So this guy becomes four integral negative pi over two to pi over two cosine to the fourth can be written as one plus cosine two theta divided by two to the second power d theta. So let us raise everything to the second. You have four and divided by four integral negative pi over two to pi over two, one plus two cosine two theta plus cosine squared two theta d theta. Again, you have another exponent here that we need to get rid of. This guy becomes, oh, we have another space. So one plus two cosine two theta, you get theta and you have, if you use u sum, you already have two. And here you have sine two theta. And for this guy, you're going to make some adjustments plus integral of cosine squared of two theta becomes one plus cosine four theta divided by two d theta negative pi over two to pi over two. There we go. So let's see, make sure everything is written correctly. We had a four here, and then we raise this guy to the second power. And let me make sure everything is written correctly here. Perfect. You could just say that, hey, I have, um, because of symmetry that you have, well, you could write this guy as 0 to pi over 2. If you feel more comfortable about this, you can just start with 0 here, and you have a 2 in front of the integral. You could simplify this a little bit more, and it makes it a little bit easier for you to do the computation eventually. So this guy is equal to here, if you plug in uh, pi over 2, you end up with pi, and this guy is going to be 0 in either case. So here you have a pi. And let's see. If we do the computation here, you can cancel out 1 and 2, and you get plus theta divided by 2. Uh, theta, and you get pi over 2, so you have another pi over 2. And since you are taking the integral of cosine of 4 theta, you end up with sine and sine of 4 theta, and if you plug in pi over 2 or 0, it becomes 0. So the risk is equal to 0 from elementary calculus. So the final answer is 3 pi over 2. It's up here, so you can see 3 pi over 2. This is the volume of the solid that lies under the paraboloid 
and above x5 plane and inside the cylinder, 3 pi over 2. As you can see, we use a lot of elementary calculus here. So a lot of um, converting into reducing the exponent using double integral formula and so on to help us calculate these types of integrals a little bit easier. 